uh, we did we did a study of around uh, close to around 175 schools across, uh, including Bangalore across uh, Karnataka, uh, purely government schools. One thing we noticed is these schools have children who are uh, coming from the labor, uh, who are closely working in the contractor job or the construction job there. And th this is a study which we did close to. Every school was monitored for a period of 15 to 20 days. The teachers actually used to go, if the child doesn't come for a day, the next day they used to go to the place where they stay or the construction is happening. They used to bring the kid back to school and make them study. You know, will that uh, you know, really happen in private schools? Obviously it will not. Uh, and uh, the, uh, that kind of a market, or the, rather the below poverty is close to 42 to 50 percent. So we mean to say that you know that 40 to 50 percent will continue as government schools, and the rest of are going to be the private schools. So what's your point? The point is like you know uh, we need to have the government schools any which ways. Sure. So that is not going to change. So how are we going to say that yes, quality education is a problem, but there is also a critical uh, you know concern there because what government schools are doing is something which the private schools really can't do. Okay. Uh, at, at all. So how, are we saying that you know? The government schools will continue with this 42% and give the crappy education, and the rest of them who are above the poverty line or who can afford it will, you know, will go forward and uh, to, you know, get into the private schools. Got it. So we'll get a response to that. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, can we have the microphone? Okay. I I have another question. Okay. Um, Shantanu and Gopal uh, talked about uh, you know we should do anything to stop the RTE Act. Now, uh, what's your prognosis for that? You know, do you think it's going to happen? And if at all, uh, are you as a key private player in this sector doing anything about it? Okay. Yes, please. Vishwanath from Terra Details. See, there are a uh, couple of points. Uh, I agree with the ridiculousness of the RTE Act on the first hand. But then in Tamil Nadu, we do have uh, some very, very nice things happening as far as the government education space is concerned. There are a lot of innovations happening. There are a lot of regulations that have actually brought about change in terms of the way the government schools and uh, to quote Shantanu, there are many government schools that are better than the private schools. And a quick comment on the last question was that I was at Junjuno, where the collector had assembled close to about 800 schools in that area, where the RTE Act is being enforced and they are going hammer and tongs at enforcing the 25 percent that at eight standard if a child comes and Bruce says his age is fit for eight standard they say it's up to you to bring him up to that level but he must be admitted in it but so many ridiculous things happening there okay so let me get to the response Eric Chansu you could take uh, you know there was a point of ethics raised you know anyone can uh, any smart entrepreneur can go uh, you know find a, uh, whatever, a garage and then set up a school now, how do you prevent that happening? And and I think, which is my question, which I expressed earlier, I think all this leads to a situation which might create a blot because you will have smart uh, uh, entrepreneurs who perhaps whose intentions are perhaps not the best. I think that's a that's a very relevant point, and but we should take a step back and see why is this happening? This is clearly happening because there's a mismatch between demand and supply. So the and there will always be uh, people who will take short there's been a huge amount of low quality, but substantial capacity built in schooling and in higher education. And today, a school or a college has a fairly long gestation period. The only parts of the country where there is a capacity shortage, which is you make money simply because you're there, is in rural areas or semi-urban areas, right? You have to actually go and find them. And there, the issue is of affordability to be able to deliver quality at a certain price point and there you will be breaking rules, you will be clearly in violation of a number of government laws if you want to deliver, let's say, education at 400, 500 rupees. So please clear yourself of that myth that it is a me too sort of a sector anymore, it's not. Secondly is this, uh, Kavita raised this point uh, about, you know, government schools have to have better schools, better schools for people who can't pay and better education in general. And a few points here are, first of all, allow schools to organize themselves as for-profit entities you know, give infrastructure status to the school. So, and a couple of others, of course, about reforming. I didn't talk about, uh, you know, doing away with RT. RT is a, the intention behind RT, I'm sure, is a great and a noble one. At least the government. Price. Then there's a second offshoot, which starts from the point of college. Uh, the objective of education, as I understand, is uh, to get jobs. That's only one way of looking at things. 
Now we went back, we are basically an innovation company, we went back and we innovated what can we actually do at that, that particular price point. And we are trying to take between 200 rupees to 2000 rupees per student at a college and giving them thorough entrepreneurship education, picking their hands up and getting them to incubation cells, allocating mentors and eventually trying to see that they, the entrepreneurs see the light of the day. Now, now we are not going back to the government, the regulation, you know, in the entire hoopla of uh, infrastructure development, coming out with schools and you know, again, just because the direction is getting a job. Why can't we start another tangent when a boy goes to school and start up with entrepreneurship? And this is what we are trying to do. The question is, is the private uh, funding industry, how does it look uh, uh, to this kind of model? Okay, so was that a pitch or what? <laughs> that's, a, that's a question. How does Because we need funding. As so a good. Who else? There was someone else with a question. Yes, ma'am. So, so far you've talked about education up till the 12th. What happens after that? And I second what you said that most people here are looking for education. I mean, the kind of people you're looking at, the people who go to government schools are looking for education that will lead to a job. And right now, the price point doesn't exist for people. I mean, there are a lot of people who, are, who cannot go to degree colleges, who cannot even go to diploma certificate courses because of the cost as well. Okay, so I'll come back. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, just, uh, it's a statement and a question. Um, I have been working with the uh, Karnataka government uh, the last seven or eight months and uh, helping them with, uh, you know, setting up libraries. Uh, they got a huge grant of about 24 crores and, I, and they were supposed to distribute it to the schools and I happened to be at the right place at the right time. I said, don't give them the money because they buy the most boring books which they wouldn't read. Forget about the kids reading it. So, you know, they listened to us. We went through a whole process of inviting publishers to send their books. We selected the books and we got about 4,000 books across seven languages. And what I was suggesting to them was, why don't we make packages of books and send it across to schools? Their fear was the RTI said, people are going to question us and ask us, why did we select this book and not that? So that's a major problem that they face. So everything is being questioned, and they're not able to do anything. And everything has to go through a whole large process of tendering and, you know? So we need to, you know, figure out a way to, you know, kind of get this whole process out, because they do want to do good work. So, yeah, you know, so I think that's something Gopal's sort of suggestion on if you are, uh, Organized as a for-profit entity, perhaps you have the freedom. They're not but, for profit. Yeah. I thought you meant for profit. Okay. Uh, there's a component of education which is stuff like leadership, stuff like the stuff beyond education, which has probably got a lot of you here. Uh, is this seen as a fundamental or is it seen as a luxury? Well, or is it something that should be embedded in existing education? How would you look at that? How do you look at stuff like leadership? How do you look, look at sort of softer school, stuff? In school or later? School and beyond. So how would you look at it? Uh, I mean, is it a luxury? Is it to be embedded? Is it basic? Okay, last question. Yes. This is a question for the investors group um, around, uh, you talk very passionately and I agree about the market-based uh, initiatives and important that the recent period as well. I'd be curious to know in the last year, how many deals between all of you were able you were able to do that were really focused on base of the pyramid education uh, at a commercial level, commercial okay. return level? Great. Yeah. Okay. Last. I just want to revert what Gopal has said and just giving an example of the financial crisis. We are talking about the private sector every time. But what has happened to our country as compared to the Uncle Sam and many other European countries? We have seen. So therefore, my only submission is that we should not only criticize the government, but in a way, we should also try and find out a solution how we can also work with the government to improve the system. So therefore, therefore, just criticizing the government and finding a solution in the private is not going to solve the problems in our country of 100, uh, 1200 million people. And the, so every I think the, the specific question is: Should the government be a more effective regulator, or should it also be a player? In, in as much I as think, I think we should we should uh, consider in taking government as a regulator as well as implementer, where the civil society and the corporate sector should play an enabling role in in improving the policy initiatives as well as Sorry. also implementing the whole policy initiatives. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think you had your hand up earlier. Thank Go ahead. you. It's a building on that. It's how does the panel see change happening? How do you see 
rather than you know, an oppositional situation. Right. Yeah. right. So, uh, can we have the microphone back? <laughs> so, so what I'm going to do, I think we've run out of time. So, Akhil, I think we've, you've heard all the questions and I think what I'm going to ask you to do is sum up in about two or three minutes and also respond to the questions uh, which you, some of which are aimed at you in, in doing so. Oh, okay, great. Uh, aimed at arrows. Okay. Uh, well, okay, let me just uh, address the issue of higher education which my idealistic friends out here were talking about. It should get you jobs. Uh, if you want a job, uh, there are plenty of retail companies and insurance companies that will hire you for 5,000 bucks. So the issue is not getting a job, the issue is are you effective at that job? A uh, survey for, by Mercer said that only 13% of management graduates have job skills. Uh, the other issue about uh, bottom of the pyramid uh, investments, we have got a few uh, of them coming to us and most of them uh, focus on using technology to bring down the cost of, you know, like from the e-learning point of view. So we actually are looking at some of those companies very seriously, but at the end of the day, uh, when you look at bottom of the pyramid, it still has to be a sustaining model that is profitable and it's not difficult to do. Right. I think. Sure. Yeah. So a very quick response to the question on uh, whether uh, skills of uh, leadership and communications and chatting about how things would be seven years later, which is today, uh, we were expecting things to be a lot more positive. They've gone in the opposite direction. But clearly, the stage is set for a partnership. Uh, stuff like uh, you know, uh, go in the night of work you're doing, UID. That's a game changer. That's going to enable some of the changes to happen. You know, for example, we talked about the voucher system, how government could directly start transferring subsidies. Uh, finding uh, different routes to edu actually educate the kids, be it tutorials, etc., etc. So if we could just have more effective and efficient use of uh, money, taxpayers' money, government funding, um, I think we can actually uh, make RTE happen um, across the board. So, you know, what's your what's your dream? As in, uh, you said that you know you started out by saying you came back from Australia with a dream to change, and you obviously done a lot already. And at least people who live in the city can see. It. What's next? Um, I'd like to go across uh, the segment. We we started with elite schooling. We started a preschooling for uh, the aspirational. Um, and nice point. Um, and and for last one year, uh, what we have forced the management uh, company is to innovate in that price bracket and brought in. Uh, things which uh, which were like two thousand dollar price points for individual uh, to to that particular price point. So we made a lot of uh, innovative models where we partnered with Brilliant, which is a uh, which is a big uh, brand name uh, in in uh, India in the IIT education, and and uh, created a product at a much uh, better price point than the two hundred thousand dollar middle class folks. Uh, their own roles in it, either as investors or as uh, practitioners. And I think the few good things that are coming out is that they're all going to strive to continue to improve quality and keep prices.